A little bit of news here in Nicaragua. So the United States has been offering a program known as parole. A lot of Americans may not be familiar with this program because it's a little bit different than normal immigration, and it isn't technically an immigration program. It is an expat program in the United States. Now, we've had videos recently about expats and immigrants and explaining what they are. The parole program is basically a temporary measure by which someone from very specifically Nicaragua, Cuba, Haiti, or Venezuela can be sponsored by someone in the United States who has a certain level of resources, a certain level of permanency, and is able to demonstrate that they are able to, and I don't know all the details, but assist someone and and speak for and guarantee a person coming from one of those countries that they are a good person, that they're able to come to the United States, that they have support and will be able to survive, and someone's going to take care of them so that they are not a burden on the American people while they're looking for a job, presumably. And it is a, it's a temporary system. It's meant for people to come for a couple of years. This program is extremely popular in this region, and a lot of Americans ask, why are so many Nicaraguans going to uh, the United States? And one of the reasons for that is the parole program. They don't realize that the United States has basically opened the floodgates for legal migration north to look for jobs to get experience, and it does give a possibility of moving into an immigrant program. That means a place where they may be moving towards a set of permanency. But parole itself does not imply that someone is coming for permanency. It is a temporary program that simply makes permanency a a more easy path in the future. But many people do the parole with the idea that they will do it and then return. They're just coming for a couple years to work, and it's kind of a, uh, a temporary program meant for that. And when we're seeing this really mass migration out of Nicaragua, people who are getting the news in the United States hear about Uh, illegal immigration at the border, which does exist and is a crisis and is a problem for everyone involved, both the United States and for Mexico and the countries in between and the actual people who are trying to get into the United States. It is a terrible uh, program, a a terrible system that's happening with uh, coyotes uh, taking people's money, putting people at incredible risk. The cartels are getting rich off of it. Major problems. And parole, in theory, helps to curtail that. And I would imagine, based on the numbers we see and what we see on the ground, that it really is curtailing that. The number of people that we interface with here in Nicaragua that are going to the United States on a coyote system, you do notice them, right? You will encounter them if you live here, almost certainly. However, the number of people that we hear that are going to the United States that legally have parole, they've gone through the system, done the paperwork, filed for it, is really large, much, much outweighs the number of people who are attempting to go illegally, and I assume that's what we see on the ground in the United States as well. Whether that's true for people coming from the other countries or not, I don't know. But here in Nicaragua, the number of people who are getting the paperwork for parole and able to go to the United States is is absolutely enormous. Nearly everyone we know who is young and working age has applied for and been approved for parole. Of course, we may be in a small cross-section of the population where many, many, many people uh, are getting that, but it's It's in our observation. It is extremely easy to get, and just tons of people are getting it, and we're seeing so many people that we know, our friends, our uh, workers, they are going to the United States with the promise of that there's going to be really good jobs there. Many then report back that they do not find that to be true when they get there and their lives are not as good as they were here because many of the people who are being approved for parole had good jobs here and had decent lives here and are going to the U.S. without jobs and then finding that it's harder to get work there if you know they don't have a real specialty skill. Uh, they obviously are new to the market, often don't speak English as well as Americans, uh, all things that make it very hard to find work unless they're doing something that is desperately needed. And so those that do find work often find that they're working as manual labor when they were professionals here. And while the U.S. does pay far better, the cost of living is so high, those who have uh, sponsored places to live, don't need to pay rent or anything like that, generally do okay. Those who do not generally do very, very badly. But that is the parole program, and that is uh, very important for the U.S. for bringing in labor. It's very important for Nicaraguans as it provides a path uh, towards towards job experience. It, one of the reasons that parole is so important is that many Nicaraguans have an opportunity to go to the United States and become versed with American work culture, and it opens the doors for them to find remote work once their parole is done, or possibly find remote work during their parole, and then return to Nicaragua and be able to keep those jobs or keep similar jobs. So it does have a lot of important purposes and and roles to play. 
What happened yesterday is that widespread corruption in the parole system was uncovered in the United States. They discovered hundreds of thousands of falsified applications. Now, supposedly, according to the news that I read, uh, this is only in the vetting of the sponsors, the process for vetting the actual Nicaraguans, Haitians, Cubans, and Venezuelans who are looking to come to the United States. That process is handled by a different department and supposedly has not found any problems. It is the vetting of or the checking the existence of the sponsors who are bringing those people in has uncovered widespread uh, corruption there that with false records, single people sponsoring thousands of people, some people being represented by fake addresses and those fake addresses having tens of thousands of applications flowing through them. And it's basically so blatant that someone is being bribed to do this and Right, pay to play for for something like immigration. Why they thought they could hide something on this scale uh, is is surprising. It makes you wonder how often this must be happening in the U.S. that we don't realize. But that was uncovered, and it's so severe that they have shut down the program temporarily until they can figure this out. Now they say they're going to get the program back up and running as quickly as they can, but will they be able to do that? We don't know. And a major question that people are asking is, is there going to be widespread deportation of hundreds of thousands of people who are in, clearly in the United States illegally because someone paid, because they didn't have a proper sponsor to bring them in? And whether or not they are going to be penalized for having been sold a fake sponsor, we don't know. There is a requirement for actually having a sponsor that knows you personally. So clearly, if there's a fake one, that does mean their applications are fake. So there is a very real possibility, a very real fear in the United States uh, of people in the parole program in the United States that there could be mass deportations tied to this because anyone who's in through one of those systems, obviously there are many, many, many people on parole completely uh, correctly who are living with their sponsor, who have a, a person who really spoke for them and is taking care of them. Those people exist. We know people who are doing that, so we know that that's true, but we now know, and it's not surprising, that massive numbers of people took advantage of the program one way or another and are now in the United States technically illegally, even though they have paperwork, that paperwork was forged or whatever, however you want to look at it. And a, a crime was committed in the act of filing that paperwork. So because the term parole means you're basically on a probation, right? So if you had done something wrong in getting the parole or do something wrong while you're on parole, that's supposed to be an automatic deportation. This could mean immense numbers of people being returned to those regions because they violated their parole. So that's what's going on right now. Obviously, this just happened. No decisions have been made, but we know that the parole system for all four countries was suspended immediately. Venezuela was already suspended for reasons in July, but on in August, the, the other three were suspended with it, uh, and now the investigation is ongoing. And what it's going to mean in the future, we will let you know as we find out. Thanks for joining me. See you all later.